Hello everyone, I hope you had a good week. This weekend I want to talk about something that kind of comes out of nowhere with my weekend updates, but I've been working on it for the last eight years. <laughs> And uh, it's something that uh, I really uh, am passionate about. I, I don't work it at every work at it every week, but I've developed a lot of different ideas and a lot of different uh, concepts because I've been working on it for so long. And that is making a fantasy world. And uh, I want to talk to you about my perspective, my experience, and I'm going to show you some things as well. This video is going to be a little bit different from the normal ones because you're not going to be seeing me. You're going to be seeing maps. Uh, yes, because I think it's something that doesn't actually happen in a lot of fiction which is geographic storytelling. Well, it's not it's just a made up world. It's not that's not what I mean. What I mean is my first uh, fantasy um experience was uh, the Lord of the Rings. I I, uh, I was given the first book for the Lord of the Rings by Tolkien, and one of the first things that you see in the book, or at least the copy that I had, is a map of the Shire. And you're like, okay, so yeah, there's a huge map, and you can't really relate to anything, because you see all the names and all the places, but you can't really tell what those are. But the thing is, the way Tolkien wrote, he tell, told all of his stories very much based on the places, and you could tell, oh, these guys are over here, and it's and it's far away, or it's not, and I need to go all the way there, it's gonna be taking months, uh, and that's a problem. And he built his, uh, his the struggle of the characters based on distances, which is a fantastic way of doing it, and it makes all the sense as well. Uh, another example, for example, is another example, for example, is uh, A Song of Ice and Fire, which of which I'm a big fan, um, which also has problems with you know geographical locations. There's the north, and there's the isolation, and there's uh, countries within countries that you know there's all these stripes and all that. But still, you don't get as much sense of that because you're not actually showed the map. Or it's not well. You are show the map in the book, but it's just not a very big aspect uh, in the storytelling itself. But I think it is something that's very important to building a, a fantasy world is knowing where all the stuff is. But more importantly, history, the history of the world, and it's something that Tolkien didn't focus as much uh, because of the way he wrote. He wrote more of sort of mythology rather than a history. It's it's, it's an interesting uh, discussion that I might talk about someday. But the thing is, building a fantasy world is, well, a lot of fun. You don't need to be a professional or you don't need to you know, have a, a, an objective with it. My objective is to one day be able to make an RPG, but, you know, it may, might never happen. But it's still a lot of fun to, ma to make up stuff. Uh, and uh, if you want to make up stuff like the bros, you want to build it on a real world, on a map. So, speaking of real worlds, let's, uh, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, this is the real world. <laughs> uh, the reason why I'm showing you the map here, uh, the, the, you know, the... the the world, the map, Mappas Mundi or something? It has a name, but the, re the reason why I'm showing you this is twofold. First off, uh, the size. So the size of most fantasy worlds are not actually, is not actually, ac well, accurate, it is accurate. It's, the thing is, it's not representative of the size of our planet. So if you want to build something that would stretch if you want to build a world that would stretch from, I don't know, Norway or Sweden up there to down to the bottom of the South America and Australia and whatever, it's just all these distances, it is so far away. As you know, as you might know, it's you, you might have gone all over the world. Me, myself, I'm just staying over here and I haven't gone very far from there. So it, it's still, it, I know a lot of places and it's all that little bit. But the thing is, Middle Earth is about the size of about this little bit over here, and Essos, I think it's the size of, uh, Essos from A Song of Ice and Fire, I think it's the size of Great Britain, it is just, it, I, I, I actually uh, should do this research, but the thing is, usually you'll see worlds that are way smaller, and there's a reason for that. Uh, the reason for that is because of abstraction, uh, and it's not important to make, you know, realism is not a, necess a necessity in, in good storytelling, uh, and that's something that you, it can be a problem uh, if, if you're doing anything, really, but realism is not the be-all the be all and all. Uh, and being able to d d extract what you want from realism is more important than actually, you know, being realistic. Because you want to have something that's fun and that's interesting and that's understandable. But the thing is, you can look at our planet and you can see so many stories that you can tell in here. Worldwide stories or local stories that connect to everything. Like, for example, imagine you're a person from Brazil over here and you just, you know, you travel to Italy. It's kind of a, it's a different country altogether. You kind of talk the language, but then you have, you find somebody that comes from Russia, for example, and all these things that you build into your story are gonna, you know, make it richer. If you just say, oh, I come from a land far, far away, and, uh, you know, there's this guy that comes from here. If you can build that into a 
greater story on the background, it's gonna make it more interesting. And it's gonna definitely make it more interesting for you as a writer to write. Uh, or, you know, if you're making a, a movie or a, a video game, it's gonna make it better. Uh, that's my belief anyway. But the thing is, the size is something that really, uh, really concerned me, uh, and always has, uh, when making my games. Uh, what my game? My, 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 uh, video game worlds, that's what I mean. I've never make it, made any game. One day, maybe. Uh, but yeah, so that's why I started with this. There's another issue, though, uh, and it's very, very important, which is, you see this over here? You see how stretched out everything looks? Can you, do you even notice that it looks stretched out but th because the thing is because a planet is round there is no single way and this is weird to understand but there is absolutely no single way of making a map that is flat that actually represents everything correctly and you'll see that in a little bit uh because i have uh, more pictures about about stuff over here uh but the thing is uh, Antarct uh, antarctica antarctica is that how it's yeah I, th I think that's how i said uh over here it looks huge it looks enormous it's it's bigger than Asia and Asia is enormous and it's it, it's not as big as this the thing is it's all stretched out because you see uh, the way the, the world works or the these map work they are based on our our planet our perception of the planet because the north doesn't really have anything so the North Pole is here but it's also here and the distance between the top of this map over here and that is not it's not the same because it wraps around and it, the more you go the weirder it gets because for example imagine you're over there the distance between there and there is basically it's very very small it's basically this oh sorry it's basically this and it's very very small because it's all stretched out and so for example if you're in North America and uh, you have a huge nuclear weapon that you want to throw at Russia and you're it's not uh, 2077 and 23rd November I think um, you're not gonna have to send a bomb all the way through Europe or the other way around it doesn't matter it you can send it over there and it's way closer it's way closer than people think uh, and uh, just, you know, not people think, but just, if you look at this map, it looks very far away, but it's not. Uh, the thing is, like, for example, this all looks very wide, th wider than it actually is. Or you can see, you know, short, you can say shorter than it actually is long, the south of, uh, the uh, south of South America. Uh, so it's all skewed. And knowing this is important when you want to build your map. Especially because you want to stay away from those bits if you can. At least that's my opinion. So let's see what I did. So... What did, do you start doing? There's a very important aspect to the world, the world map that I'm, I'm not even considering right now at this stage, which is, um, you know, what where things are gonna go and what the story is gonna be told and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't matter really. What you want to do is want to build land masses that look kind of realistic. So you can see over here that I tried to, to play a little bit with a stretched out land mass over there, uh, but that was not gonna work too well with the in-game maps or you know, in well, with my maps. Um, so I. I quickly gave that uh, gave up that idea. I think uh, I think we'll see that in a little bit. Uh, and over here, I tried to shy away from that, and it's all a little bit stretched out. It's a little bit closer than it actually looks, and all that. But it doesn't really matter. That that doesn't really matter. You want to build, make it realistic, but you know, to an extent. Uh, so you want to focus on the coastlines and continents and all that sort of stuff. So you can see over here that I built kind of uh, this is this is ocean over here and these are islands over there and kind of a big continent over here and a little smaller one over there. And these are big continents. This is a big stuff over here. You can note if you look it up. Just it's just the size of Europe over here and uh, this is the size of Asia with a with Africa. So it's enormous. It's really really big. And uh, you can, you think to yourself at this point. How am I gonna fit a story in that? What 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 does it matter? It doesn't actually matter. The thing is, uh, you know, you'll see that in a little bit. The thing is, it doesn't. You don't need to use all of this stuff. You need to make up stuff for it, sure. But you know, somebody from up here in a medieval fantasy world, he's not gonna know about what's going on down here. You might have it written, but you know, you don't. You're not, not even gonna need to include it in your in your story. You know, so it's um. It's, it's, you know, it's more important to just build something more that's more or less the realistic uh, and uh, then, you know, actually make up stories. Don't worry about that for right now. Uh, I did, of course, have something in mind. This is actually not my first iteration of the map, but still, uh, you know, this, th this is more or less a rough sketch that you just need to build based on the real world. And, you know, a bunch of ocean over there and a bunch of ocean over here and, you know, you can cut away if you need, and I did. Uh, so let's look at what I did. I cut away. I decided to just... Uh, Cut away a little bit there, make the make out the uh, you know take that away, uh, take this island over there, and uh, actually that's something that um, that you don't see very often is islands like Great Britain for example. Uh, they exist like there, Madagascar uh, or Japan is a big uh, I can I can show you over there. Just no, they exist, but they usually part except for Great Britain and Madagascar. They usually part of a bigger uh, you know 
This, for example, is a very uh, is a convergence of uh, tectonic plates that makes a bunch of volcanoes appear and all that sort of stuff. So if you want to have that in your game, you can have that. Like, for example, I did that over here, try to mimic a little bit the ring that we see, we see over here. But that is a general rule, I kind of try to shy away from that, because that's a huge landmass that's going to create issues, you know, just... It, the people are, who are going to live there, they're going to be a different cunt, uh, country, they're going to be harder to colonize if you're bringing in a huge empire which I am in my story, but it's just gonna create a mess. So what I did is I just tried to, you know, streamline, make it as interesting looking as possible, and make it also uh, one thing that I struggled with, but then eventually I kind of settled on something that I think looks realistic, is the shore, the shorelines, because it, at this scale you're gonna see a lot of little things, but all these things, they are the size of their countries over here, so it's just, you know what I mean? Just look at, oh no, I'm, look, we're going ahead. Uh, you know what I, just look, like, you see these? They're huge, but they look like little things. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's trying to make it look realistic, that's very important. Uh, and yeah, th basically, that's that. Next stuff is, you know, major geological features. You're gonna want to have this for a very specific reason, because deserts in particular, and then eventually uh, mountains, these are very important land, uh, land barriers that actually stop people from uh, going from one place to another, and I'm not talking about uh, like developed civilizations and all that sort of stuff. I'm talking about way before that. If you want to build a proper uh, world, it doesn't need to be fantasy. It could be you know science fiction, whatever. It's all fantasy, I guess. But if you want to build something that really has you know some roots to stand on, you're gonna want to think back to where even how the planet was colonized, and that might actually, if you want to do something like, for example, imagine these guys came from outer space or gods placed them here. You want to think of that and you just you want to leave little hints to the reader or, or to the player to understand where things started and all that sort of stuff uh, and you want to have like I don't know if you want to have like uh, something underground over here imagine this is a big crater for like a meteor that was just a god that exploded here or something you want, usually you will see that like for example oh the island of the island of death over there is just like a thing out in the middle of nowhere and like oh this is spooky if I go there in game it's gonna be amazing uh, but yeah, usually that's a little bit more the other way around you just build a story and then build something on the world and not really build the world to put a story on uh, but you can see that these are over here just you know that's like the real world is like uh, not very mountainous in the most part you know uh, let me show you on the map you see this you have a lot of mountains over there because you know India is all smashed up over there you have Italy over here you have all of this line and that's about that <laughs> it's not really that much and the deserts you see that so basically it's major geological features that you're gonna want to take into consideration when building your world, but not really so much to a point where it de determines what you're gonna build. Like, for example, yeah, this is mountains over here, but if you build a country over there, it doesn't it doesn't need to be just guys that live in a mountain. There's a lot of beach, there's a lot of forest you can put in there, and that's, that's all that really matters. It's just major stuff. What comes after is also pretty important, which is major population. So, over here in my world, what I did is I decided to have the birth of civilization be somewhere around here. It doesn't really matter, there's a timeline, but basically it's something, somewhere around there. And then eventually, um, and uh, of course, if this game ever gets published, it's gonna be spoilers, but yeah, well. Uh, <laughs> so, if it's just you made up. Uh, so, eventually, the people started to develop and all this sort of stuff and started to popul populate all these places and, you know, went around and there's this big bay over here. Here with big, this big, luscious uh, sort of South African looking or, you know, feeling in temperature and all that sort of stuff. And then it started going north and populize, popul populating all this place and eventually over there as well. I'm not really talking about, you know, like, you know, conversions of continents or anything like that. That's, that that'd be some really complex stuff. And the thing is, they eventually populated this island, these islands and this. So, over here, this is the major territory for a culture, a specific culture, it's not really countries, but a specific culture that happened like 2,000 years before the, the story takes place. And over there, it's another one. So there's a lot of desert over here that you are not going to want to just, these guys are going to shy away from there. There's going to be tribes, of course, and a lot of people living there, sure, but they, they don't live too much, and uh, well, they, there's not as many people there, and what I'm, that's what I mean, as there is here, and it's just, you know, they, they build a very powerful, uh, and it's fantasy, so it's a, I, I decided to make this uh, magic, more magic related, because these guys were a little bit better for that. They also developed it because they were separated. It's actually called the Divide. This, uh, this sea, 
Uh, and over here, th there's also a lot of count uh, kingdoms down here and all that sort of stuff. But these are the main story points that you... Well, yeah, I am building a story. So, yeah, basically, these are the main story cultures. So, you want to focus on that. Because everything else is secondary. You don't really need to think about that. Uh, you need to think about this reach for your... Um, for your... Um, uh, for your cultures. So, that's uh, what I did. And then... The thing is, these guys populated a lot of stuff. And these are big islands over here, you need to think that. So, in a medieval looking place, or in a medieval place, this is all gonna be fractured. It's all gonna be a mess. And what you see here is actually current day, as in the story. Uh, so the thing, what happened is, these guys disappeared. Uh, you know, after 2,000 years, they disappeared. But they didn't disappear as in they diluted and they just left or anything. They actually disappeared. So, you know, it's an interesting uh, and kind of cliche thing that I'm not going to play on too much because it is cliche. But these guys disappeared and nobody kind of understands that well. Um, and, uh, you know, there's no telling of what's actually going down, going on down here. Because, you know, they're not a, there's kingdoms in there, but they're, they, they hurt the guys that come from down here. So... There's not a whole lot of messages, mostly mythos from down here. So basically, the known world, if you want to play the game around this part, is this. And not so much that. Uh, so yeah, this over here that you see in orange is a big empire that I decided to build. And all the little kingdoms around that are being assimilated or being made uh, vassals and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that. That's that's thing. And these guys stayed mostly... Um, it, they are ancient and magic and all that sort of stuff. So that's what I decided to go with. But as I was saying before, you don't actually need to build the whole game. You're not going to be traveling from here with a little map marker or even open world. That would be crazy. But you're not going to be doing that. It's, it's completely realistic because the distances are just enormous over here. There's like a thousand kilometers would be or like 600 miles would be like from here to here. So it just it's not realistic. So what you want to do is want to build spaces. If you want to build just a, sim a simple map from a simple game, or not a simple game, the simple map for however big the game is, you can still do this, but this, uh, my game actually has three, uh, four main chapters, my story anyway, has four main chapters and it was built for a game, so that, it, it, there's a reason why there's chapters, um, because, you know, there's major plot points that you can make decisions and that will change things and all that, so you just need to think about these particular maps, and these are still full, full-sized maps on in-game, where you have all the locations and all that sort of stuff, but if you want to tell a story, as I said, you don't need to focus on the whole thing. You just need to focus on the places where the story takes place and then on how it gets affected by everything. So, for example, over here, you can tell that this is basically the most, the westernmost part of the empire uh, of the empire over here. So this is going to be like a frontier place and there's not all, any people living there because this is basically deserted 2,000 years after this was a huge sprawling um, just continent of people living in like you know, classical people and all that. So there's ruins and there's roads and, you know, just the colonization of that. But there's not a whole lot... Sorry, I'm, I'm moving the wrong way. There's not a whole lot of... Um, there's not a whole lot of, of, of things to go on. Uh, so, yeah. That place over there. And then this place is kind of like the, the uh, other end of it. But it's still a little bit more, you know, towards the mountains. And you can see different cultures on the, based on the ruins. So it's a game of where you just visit the past as well. So if you want to do that, you can focus on that. And, uh, you know, there's that capital over there that's that we go at the end of the game. And over here, there's, a, there's the starting point of the game. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of is isolated. Kind of traditional, really. And then over there, of course, you know, I, I wouldn't have made this if I didn't plan on going there. And uh, that's a major political focal point of, of my story. Uh, so, yeah, it's another thing where you talk to people and, you know, you get to know them a little bit better, and then eventually you go over there to the end of the game. Uh, so, it's yeah, just, as I said, you don't need to know, to see and to have a full map to uh, have a full story or a full world, but it just makes it better. So, uh, this is what I was saying before. You see these lines over there? There's now islands over here that I didn't talk about as well. Um, and over there. Uh, so you see how this goes? Basically, that's the edge of the map. You can't have anything up here or anything. Because that's that doesn't exist. Otherwise, it would appear over there. It's just, it's not how it goes. But this will allow you to know a little bit better if you do this, if you do this projection. It will allow you to, you know, build your world and your di directions a little bit better. So this direction from here to here is the same as that one from that one. So you can see this is actually this, and way, way larger than it actually looks. Uh, of course, you can build a map the other way around as well, if you want, and just never mind anything, and just, you know, say that that distance is that one, and you can project it over here, and that makes as much sense as you want, uh, but it's still very important. So, I drew a few mountains, based on the mountains that I drew before, and the rivers, the rivers is actually something very, very important for, lo more, mostly for local build, if you want to, if you want to build a... Um, 
build a country over there, you're gonna need to know, like, this river connects to this, this uh, place, and there's gonna be something over there, and of course you can change and build it from the, the small stuff to the big picture stuff, but, yeah, so, after this, after all this said and done, and all the map is built, you're gonna wanna start making up names. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's that's a whole different that's a whole different thing. Uh, building names and just making up names is something um, that um, that just it, it's gonna require a, a whole different theory, and I'm not good for that. Uh, but I did build there's there's language generators online, and I did build something off of uh, language generator, not it, exactly, but uh, start start making up you know, old languages for, like, all these places and all, like, like, the reavers that came through tradition, because these guys are effectively descendants from these guys, and there's a whole story behind that. Like, this river has a name in old law, in the law, uh, old language, but that one doesn't, and, you know, just make it interesting, make it me mixed up to keep readers on their toes. Uh, and, but the thing is, the seas are probably the, the most important thing, so I started off with that. And then the continents, which is also pretty important, of course, they have reasons to have those names, and you should write them down. If you're making something, write these things down. Why is it called the Isles of Mine? of Moin, and over here, Moin's Rest, what is that up, who's Moin, and the Cradle, what does that mean? Uh, of course, it means, you know, that's where they came from, it's, uh, it, it was actually, it's translation, and mistranslation, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, but basically, they have names, and you should write the reasons, write down the reasons, because you're gonna forget, I promise you, you are. Uh, the Purple Gardens over here, it's all, you know, to do with them. Um, with uh, what they are and what they represent, because, you know, of course, then you're gonna build all, all the things that actually matter, uh, and you have names like a light spear over there, and the Vanguard, and Isles of Sorrow, and I, that, actually, that's a little bit of what I was saying before, the Isles of Death, uh, the Isles of Sorrow over there, that, that beautiful, beautiful place, and just beautiful people, just, you know, something ironic, if you want to build that on that, the Eagles, and just a group of islands, or, you know, whatever, and the, what, what did I call that? Oh, the Great Eagle, oh, that's right, that, because it looks like an eagle, eh, it, it probably isn't a great name, to be honest, but, um, yeah, I can change it at any time. So, after that, you want to refine all the things that you have right there. This is the... Actually, I can't read it right now. I have it written somewhere. And this, it's made up... It's the, my made up language. Um, it, this is the reach of the old ones, basically. I think that's the translation. Uh, and, of course, the empire starts spreading in. Uh, so, this is the main point of my story. Uh, and this is the beginning. And, of course, that's how it spreads. You see? You tell a story over there, you tell a story over here, and a little bit over there. Of course, these are not randomly chosen. I have an idea of what I want to do, but then you have a little bit of a backbone to just write yourself into. Uh, and I think that uh, that's going to be that for my little expose. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let's uh, continue with other things, because uh, this is my weekend update. And I can bring myself back as well. Hey! So what games came out this week? What RPGs? Well, Prey is kind of, sort of, not really, but uh, Prey is in a, on everybody's, no, well, not everybody's, but on a lot of people's minds, and it came out this week, and it's uh, done by the guys that did, um, actually, what is their recent game? What? It, it's Arcane Studios, I know that, but I think it's the guys that made Arc Fatalis, but their recent, their most recent game. Am I really that mistaken in in thinking that they did the Wolf Corvo? Do the what was that game? Dishonored, yeah, the guys that did Dishonored. But more importantly, it uh, is um, it's not written by Chris Avalon, but Chris Avalon is helping writing uh, Prey. It is sort of a reboot to the Prey franchise, as far as I'm aware. It plays a little bit like uh, Bioshock would play. Uh, and if you're interested in games like that, you should check it out. There's links for you in the description if you want to know. Um, or, you know, just everybody's playing it on, on YouTube. Just You might have come across that, so it's probably not news. Uh, the Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky the third. That's the third game in the Trails in the Sky. Um, I believe that's the name of the, the series. Has come out as well. It's a JRPG. Uh, as far as I can tell, I haven't played it. But it looks like people are really happy with that. And it's not letting fans of the series down. So, um, links for you in the description. So what I've been watching this week is a small little video, it's not really that small, but it's like 20 minutes uh, of uh, explanation on how 
mainstream role-playing games do dialogue, and specifically dial dialogue animations, and it's done by the guys at Extra Credits, uh, and uh, I got a link for you up there if you want to check it out. Uh, and it's mostly related to the whole Mass Effect Andromeda sort of debacle, really, but it's not really about that, it's just trying to explain what happened and uh, trying to show how developers work. And it's really a really interesting video, I highly advise you check it out, so there's a link for you up there if you want to check it out. That's, uh, that's what I've been watching this week, among other things, but just my... Highlight. That's the word. <laughs> and as every week, I want to thank you very, very much for all you guys' support, but especially to those of you that go out of your way to support me more and entirely on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash kernelrpg. I got a link for you up there if you want to check it out. Uh, soon I'll have, as I said last week, I'll have the... Um, the rewards, the specific rewards that you're going to be able to get uh, if uh, if you support me, uh, to different tiers and all that sort of stuff. But I want to thank very, very much Benji, Namiknur, Rob, anybody, Robert Daffern, Jordan Cozart, Casper K. J. Jorgensen, Paul Bible, Joshua A. Ennis, Michael Grayson, Higher Ground Gaming, Grigory Krasikov, and Atom Collider. Thank you very much, guys, for your support, for your generosity. You guys are awesome. And uh, if uh, you don't support me on Patreon and you might be interested in that, feel free to check that link up there. And if not, that's totally okay as well. You're totally awesome for watching. I really, really appreciate it. I say it every video. I do say it every video, but I mean it every video. And it sounds a little bit weird, though. I know it does. Let me know. Let me know what you feel about my outro and all that. Uh, it's because I say it so many times. <laughs> I try to mess it up, to change it up every once in a while, but I mean it. I really do mean it, guys. You're just amazing. You're amazing for watching my stuff. Honestly, no, for no, for liking the games that I play, that's that's the that's why you're amazing because you like the games that I play. There's nobody that's all that's awful that likes RPGs. Nobody, no, except for me. No, hopefully not. No. <laughs>with a quote and today's quote is actually interesting and well I I am I'm actually I'm I'm not not I'm proud of, of the quotes I've I've quote I quote every video uh, but uh, today's quote is special uh, because it's on the this little book that you see over here uh, it's the book that uh, that I write all my stuff in not well game stuff and just notes and timestamps and mostly notes but timestamps as well depends what I'm doing just bunch of them. it's a mess one day one day I'll do I'll get another camera to point over there so you guys can just look and have like a proper editing thing and all that sort of stuff so you guys can look at this if you're interested or not I don't know but um, yeah I got a bunch of notes over here and this book it's a quote over here I had to check it up uh, or look it up because I didn't didn't know it it's this thing that you see you might be able to read it right right there uh, probably not um, but uh, I had to look it up because it says that it's from Albert Einstein uh, and I didn't know who it was, so I just, instead of uh, making a fool out of myself, as I often do, I looked it up, and it is indeed from Albert Einstein, and it's got to do with this video as well, so that's why it's special. Creativity is contagious. Pass it on. It is. It very much is, and I hope I can take, can take, contagified some of you guys today with my uh, little video about world building and map building. Uh, and uh, if, uh, by the way, I didn't write those at, by hand, I did it all on Photoshop. Uh, it's not that hard, actually. To, once you just have the lines, it's just, you know, if you know the filters and all that sort of stuff, I'm not very amazing at Photoshop, but I do work with it, so that's where I get my knowledge. Um, but yeah, I hope I can take, again, There's some, some, there's one of you, or three, that's written what I'm trying to say. Contagified. Contag, contag. I can't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a native speaker, as uh, some of you guys might know. Uh, so, yeah, thank you very much, once again, for um, your, for watching, for your support, for your love, and for your amazingness. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.